Hi, my name is Kat Fowler and I'm a yoga teacher here in New York and I've been a longtime student of Sri Dharma Mitra and had the honor of interviewing him today for the yoga knit community and yogis all around the globe. So a little introduction on who Sri Dharma Mitra is. Um, Sri Dharma is a legendary yoga teacher who first encountered yoga as a teenager before meeting his guru in 1964 and beginning his training in earnest. Sri Dharma founded one of the earliest independent yoga schools in New York City in 1975 and has taught hundreds and thousands the world over in years since. Since Dharma is the model and creator of the master yoga chart of 908 postures, the author of asanas, 608 poses, he has released two DVDs to date, Mahasadana's Level 1 and Level 2. And the yoga journal book titled Yoga, modeled after his famous master chart of asanas. Sri Dharma continues to disseminate the complete traditional science of yoga through daily classes, workshops, and his life of a yogi teacher training here at Dharma Yoga Center in New York City and around the world. For more information regarding anything Dharma, you can visit the dharmayogacenter.com. About your experience with yoga, when did you start practicing yoga and why? In 1957, I start reading some yogic books and I read a nice book that talks about Samadhi, Days of Peace, I still remember the, the name of the book. And then I start practicing a few things through the books, a few meditation, relaxation, without any teachers. My dream at that time was to find a teacher, but in Brazil at that time there was any available, especially where I was living. So I did some practice through the books, not the asanas, not the hatha, only the other part. When and why did you decide to teach yoga? After 1967, after three years of my arrival in New York City, I could speak English enough to run a class. Due to the results of my own experience, and also I didn't have any profession, I don't have even a high school. And to teach yoga for me was really a blessing because it doesn't require any high school. It was very easy. I would be my own boss. And also I have to keep practicing. So that will keep me in good shape too. And then it is, it was a pleasure to find out too that the highest type of charity is sharing spiritual knowledge to relieve others' pain and suffering. So I made a serious decision. I am going to be a yoga teacher. What does yoga mean for you? Yoga means for me a, the best of all the tools that allow me to keep in good health and also to acquire some mental abilities and through the first step and second step of yoga my ethical behavior improved a lot, especially compassion. So yoga for me is a, a great blessing 
one of the, the best toes that I could found at that time. So I still appreciate yoga because it is a easy, simple, most efficient way to achieve good health, mental power, and spiritual power. What is a yogi? A yogi has a few meaning. Anyone who practices yoga is a yogi. A yogi also is one who already practices yoga, who achieves some self-control, who is kind, who is full of compassion, who is self-realized, at least have some self-knowledge, and has all the good qualities. They are automatically vegetarian, and extremely compassionate to all beings. These uh, enlightened beings are a real yogi. Who, of course, they are also expert in, in the yoga knowledge through their experience. So they became a yogi. How does yoga help people? The teacher who are about to tell them about yoga explained the results, the amazing results of yoga. Radiant health, mental power, self-control, you understand? The highest type of concentration and with spiritual power. With these powers, one is able to succeed in anything once someone wants to. So, very simple. <laughs> <laughs> How do you help people through yoga? Well, due to some my own experience and experiencing amazing things, I am able to use yoga and, have, and the techniques of yoga to help others to learn those techniques and automatically they will enjoy the effects, the results of yoga. That is health, mental powers, and then well, also you have the ability to become self-controlled and succeed in your career or in your religion. What inspires you to continue teaching daily classes? One is this. It's good for you because I usually practice during my teaching. I demonstrate the poses, and that will keep my physical health in good condition. And also, due to the compassion that you acquired through the practice of many years, it is really a pleasure to see others being helped and being happy and healthy and out of pain and suffering. So it is a real joy to teach and to practice it and at the same time. So tell us about Dharma Yoga and what makes a Dharma Yoga class so special and unique. The reason is we really concentrate on the Raja part of the yoga the part that deals with ethical behavior, the ethical rules, and also with knowledge, knowledge of reality, knowledge of the self. So we really encourage the students to be compassionate to all beings, to follow yama, and Niyama is the, is the yoga of knowledge, purification. So we really concentrate 
on the purification of the mind and the spirit of, and the intellect. How do you keep your energy levels up during a busy day full of teaching? Well, mainly the food. We must control the food. Most food, for example, my, most of my food are raw. And I keep, try to keep the amount of liquid in the body properly. And also doubts must be removed. I don't have much of the doubt, spiritually speaking. I have other kinds of doubts. But inside, spiritually, you, have, you are free from any doubts. So we do not spend too much energy. I myself, maybe I sleep three, four hours every day. Of course, maybe I stay in bed for eight hours, but not sleeping. <laughs> I keep trying to figure it out something awake. But the main thing is this. Keep the food properly. Relax, shavasana, and don't worry too much about things. That's why we do some pranayama and relax, to keep the mind calm. In order to save other kinds of energy, you have to be, to be moderate in sex. <laughs> so if you are moderate in sex and eat properly, you live forever. You have boundless energy. What would you say to someone who wants to try yoga for the first time? Well, first of all, I share with them some of my own experience of yoga, the powers of yoga that yoga promise, and the, the mental powers, the spiritual powers, and all the other cities. And also I would explain the student about the goal of yoga, that is, that is self-knowledge and self-realization. And then I emphasize, encourage the student to be serious about following the instructions and changing their diet. And then finally I will make the student to come and try one class after the person tries, that's it. He's hooked forever. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, the yoga of a householder, be nice to your guests, to your pets, become vegetarian, be obedient to your spiritual preceptor. You should have in your house at home a special corner in your house or a room for the practice of yoga. And there you do only that, yoga and meditation, because the room has to be polarized with good vibration. And uh, don't miss your practice. You must do it Monday through Friday, no matter what. You may skip Saturday and Sunday. Do it five minutes, but do it steadily. And then there will be success. Remember, if you don't want to do the postures, go to a gym and do any other exercise. And the main poses for yoga is a sitting position. And then Shavasana. Learn these two poses. And the others you have choice. There are easy yoga poses or do something else. You must be active. Never miss your meditation. Even five minutes, but do your meditation. And everyone must have the Yoga Sutras, the Yoga Pradipika, and the Bhagavad Gita. And then you are done. And then find a teacher that can remove your doubts and guide you in case you have doubts. How do you deal with the days that you just don't feel like teaching or practicing? For a yogi, this what I meant is a real yogi, he never feel like that. <laughs> but a yogi who is still, every yogi is like this, they are not totally self-controlled. Sometimes, let's say, today I didn't sleep well, I have argument with my wife, and I have disturbance for my children, and then I don't feel like teaching. But with our knowledge inside, I am not identified with that. So when the, the classes start, everything changed, because I am not with the body, even if the mind is feeling like that, but I am with the spirit. Do it and be nice. And then everything goes perfect. Now those who have no control of that yet, if you don't feel all right to teach, make sure you relax before the class. You spend 10 minutes in meditation and then you'll be able to cope with the class. So, do you have a message for the yoga net community, or do you have a message for all yogis that are watching this? One of the messages I have is to be obedient to your teacher, if you still have one. Without obedience, you cannot find enthusiasm to do the practice. And without the practice, no success. How to be reverent, respectful, obedient to your teacher. Be compassionate to all being. Be loyal to this almighty one. Extremely loyal. Loyal mingled with obedience and see yourself in others. If you see yourself in others, how can you hurt anyone? You be obedient, reverent. So this what I think you should do. Be vegetarian. See God everywhere, because in reality, 
everything is a manifestation of God. Mm. Oh.